piles of rubble where homes once stood. Abu Ali hardly recognizes his neighborhood. He's recovering what he can of his former life. This home's our rock, it's part of our life. It's now cracked as a result of the earthquake. I'm collecting our possessions and we'll look for shelter. I can't afford to restore the building. The cracks cause fear. Many have left their homes as the aftershocks continued. In the marketplace, businesses have been closed with many badly damaged. I managed to salvage some of the goods. The rest was damaged. I keep them at home. I'll try to fix part of the shop and resume business when possible. That is my story. Buildings that remain standing need to be inspected. The engineer's syndicate examined the damage. The crack is six millimeters wide. The building must be demolished, he says. Unlike neighboring Turkey, rebel-held Idlib doesn't have the resources or finances of a fully functioning state. We try our best to avoid demolition, taking into account the extremely high cost of reconstruction. The financial situation in general has already deteriorated. We are trying to strike a balance. Residents fear a decision to demolish. Many don't have the money to rebuild and there's no financial aid available. For Abu Ali, living in a tent is safer than his house. He does what he can to keep his children happy. Come baby, see what I've bought you, he says. The Syrian Response Coordinators Organization says more than 50,000 displaced people are now living in shelters here. This tent city now their homes for the foreseeable future. Asad Beg, Al Jazeera.